Hey guys and welcome back. Well, I recently did a video on why correct edge flow is so important for your 3D model. And in this video, part two, we're gonna take the next step and we're gonna look at other things you need to consider. Okay, here we go. Right guys, so I recently did a video on uh, why a, a clean and proper 3D model mesh is important. And uh, I explained how to properly get rid of uh, unnecessary edges and vertices. And in this video, we're going to follow up on that and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, triangles and gons and what is considered to be a efficient and clean mesh. Okay. All right. So let's start off by creating a simple cube. I'm going to go in, create polygon primitives and cube. There we go. Looking at this cube, this is a perfectly clean mesh. It has nice quads being faces with four sides. Um, there's no distortion, there's no stretching, there's no unnecessary edges, and the poly count is nice and low. If I select this in object mode and I look at my poly count, it is six. I got six faces, which makes sense because it's a cube, okay? All right, so what if I go into my attribute editor and I go into my polycube one and I increase the uh, subdivision level to two by two by two? Now, is this a clean mesh? Well, it certainly is. Okay, so no problem then. Well, that depends. I mean, why am I adding these edges? Do I need them? I mean, if I don't need them, I'm unnecessarily adding poly count to my model, and that is never good. Now, why is that never good? Well, if I'm making a model for, let's say, a game, okay? A game renders in real time. If I am sitting uh, playing a PC game and I'm hitting my keyboard to have a character to go left, then once I do that, the uh, game has to render it real time and change the position of the character going to the left. So the more polygons that are in a scene, uh, the bigger strain it will be on the system and the harder it will be to play the game smoothly, okay? So you always want to avoid poly count if you don't need it. All right, so what's the perfect poly count? Well, that depends. I mean, is it a primary object? Is it the weapon of the main character or is it a crate somewhere in the background? So you kind of need to keep that in mind, okay? Now, if you're making a model for, let's say, a movie, it's a totally different story because a movie is rendered in sequence and once it's rendered, it's rendered, okay? So that's something you need to keep in mind. All right, so now that we have this, let's go in and add some edges. So I'm gonna go to, uh, let me see, insert edge loop. And we'll do one here and one here, one there, one there, 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 and one there, okay. All right, so we got those in. Well, let's just for a second disregard the fact that we don't need these edges, okay? Let's just talk about the position of them. Would this be considered a clean mesh? Well, technically yes, because I got nice square faces and they all seem to be good and so forth, but they're not evenly spaced and they're creating a lot of stretched objects, okay? So it'd be much, much better to have an evenly divided surface like this, okay? All right, so let's talk about triangulation. Now, triangulation basically means turning this object into an object that is built out of triangles, okay? Now, why would you wanna do that? Well, if you're creating a model that's gonna be used in a game engine, what um, the game engine is gonna do to your model is it's gonna turn it into triangles, okay? So it's gonna triangulate your model. Now, um, that means that if you like, you can actually turn your model into a triangulated model uh, right here in Maya before it goes to the game engine. So you can see exactly how it will turn out and uh, whether everything is okay, all right? So we're gonna right click, go to object mode, and we're gonna go up to mesh and triangulate. And what Maya does is it takes all of our nice quads and cuts them in half and turns them into nice triangles. Perfect. So is this a clean mesh? Yes, it is. Now, why is it so easy for Maya to turn these into triangles? Because a square is two triangles, easy as that. And why are triangles so important? Well. Um, there's a math mathematical thing called uh, Pythagoras, and I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. And uh, that deals with how you calculate, um, you know, edges on a triangle. Anyway, 
So that's how that works. So what if you have a model that doesn't have perfectly square faces? How will Maya deal with that? Okay, so I'll show you an example. I'm gonna go in again and let's go to uh, create polygon primitives. Let's take a cylinder, okay? I'll hit W, I'll move out of the way. There we go, I have to zoom in. And what you see already is on the top here, I have triangles and on the sides I have long faces, okay? So what I can do is go into the attribute editor and say, okay, I want some more subdivisions in height like this for the simple reason that my faces are now nice and square and it looks better. Would I do that? Well, it depends. Again, you know, if I can get away with it from a poly count point of view, um, making the model look more evenly spaced is always a good thing, but not if you are going over your poly count budget. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right. Now let's look at the top here, triangles. Okay, that is not an issue, right? So what if we have a situation where we don't have quads or triangles? Let's go in. Top view, I have to zoom in, right click, go to edge, shift, drag, select all of them. And as we learned in the last video, we're gonna hold down control and hit delete. So what we have right here is one huge N gone, okay? Why is it an N gone? N stands for a number that is not defined and um, you know, it's not a polygon like this one. Well, technically it is because there's more than one, but you know, you can see right here, if we go to vertex, it has a huge number of vertices, so it's a surface with a huge number of edges, and we don't want that. Because what happens if uh, Maya cuts this in half? Will we have a triangle? No, we will not. So, not good. So what you need to do is you need to avoid n-gons, especially when you are working towards uh, game engines, okay? If you have an n-gon in your model where you're rendering out a static JPEG, for example, it's not a big deal, but I would certainly recommend to always avoid n-gons just as a matter of proper workflow, right? So how does Maya deal with something like this if we needed to clean this up? Well, luckily Maya has a cleanup tool, okay? So we're gonna right click go to object mode. I'm gonna select this guy and I'm gonna go to uh, mesh and clean up down here, okay? And once we select that, we get a couple of options. First, I'll go in and I'll go to edit and reset settings. And basically the questions that I get here from an operation standpoint, do I want to clean up any issues or do I just want to select them? I want to clean them up, okay? And then from a scope point of view, do I want to uh, select it and apply it to the selected objects or apply to all objects? Well, I got this one selected. I want this one to be cleaned up, okay? And then it says keep construction history, you know, just so we can, for example, go back and so forth. Right, and then it says here, what do you want to deal with? You have four-sided faces, faces with more than four sides, concave, uh, and so forth. Now, I want to identify faces with more than four sides, and I want them to be fixed, okay? So let's say hit clean up, and there you go. What Maya has done is they took that surface and they connected the one vertex to every other vertex. So each face right here is now a triangle. And as you can see, that is now clean, right? And if I were to go to object mode and say, I want this to be uh, triangulated, then you would see how that would follow like that, okay? So just to recap a couple of things, uh, what is a clean flow? A clean flow is um, a mesh with the right number of subdivision. So not too high, not too low. Uh, don't put in any edges that you don't need. Uh, make sure it's within your polycon budget and make sure you avoid n-gons so that things can be properly triangulated if you are going to use it in a game engine, okay? So that's uh, basically what I wanted to add. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you don't wanna miss any videos in the future, make sure to subscribe, okay? Well, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time, bye.